Alright. Hello and welcome to another episode for MC Airsoft. I am Mark and today we're going to be discussing whether or not FPS actually matters. And the answer is yes and no. Right? Does it matter? Yes. Does it is it the end all be all? No. Obviously there's a point in time where it don't it no longer matters. Um, and most newer airsoft players they see that 400 FPS mark for their field or 450 for maybe a DMR or 350 if they're indoors or whatever the case is, they see that FPS limit and they immediately think they have to have something right on that edge in order to keep up with other people or to have an advantage on other people. So a little bit of a, a yes and no answer to it because there isn't with most things in airsoft there isn't going to be a yes or no hard and confirmed it's going to vary so the first thing to talk about is heavy bb's so obviously if the hop up is all the same you know a, a two guns with standard hop up two guns with R hop two guns with S hop two guns with flat hop whatever your case is the gun or the airsoft gun that is firing at a higher FPS will be able to hop heavier BBs. That's or more efficiently. That's just how that works, right? Um, the more FPS behind it, the more air behind it coming out of the nozzle the harder it's going to hit that hop-up rubber, which means the easier it is going to be for that BB to get hopped on its way out the barrel. Uh, more backspin you can impart. Uh, my dog's wandering, wandering around in the background. Um, so the heavy or the higher FPS you have, the more hop you're going to be able to put onto a uh, BB. So so that's the first case now if you're using a lighter weight baby like uh, a 0 0.25 0 0.28 kind of range um, obviously stay away from 0.2s if you're getting more into the hobby right but within that 0 0.25 0 0.28 range does that really matter no not not a lot because the your hop up is going to be pushing down into your bb so you're going to be hitting it with about the same amount of force for the same amount of backspin it's it's going to be um there's going to be some variation obviously i'm talking about the same hop up rubber across the board right so the it's either going to strike the rubber harder or it's going to um the rubber is going to be pushed down which means it's going to grab and throw it easier so you might see a little bit more consistency with the higher FPS, but probably not. Um, so, yeah, with a higher FPS, you're going to be hopping heavier BBs easier, in theory. Second thing is going to be wind, right? Because uh, if you're like me, you live in a wind tunnel, you play in a wind tunnel, we're averaging on a calm day 5 to 7 miles per hour on a windy day where it gets to the top end it's 35 maybe 40 miles per hour obviously we aren't playing on those days but um that is something to keep in mind that the faster your projectile is going throughout the duration of the flight of the bb the, uh, the if it goes quicker it's going to have less time to interact with the wind if the slower bb is going to have more time to interact with the wind so in theory, you will have less wind drift and have, in theory, more accurate shots. Um, so that's kind of a point to that. Yes, heavier BBs will help that, but assuming that the BB weights are the same, say 0.32s, which is mostly what I shoot, again, living in a wind tunnel, um, you, with your two guns shooting 0.32s, Maybe they're at the same range because they got their hop-ups dialed in, let's say 200, uh, 200 feet. Well, you're going to have the faster BB 
is going to have less variation with the wind than the slower BB. Um, if anyone wants to read further on that, you can look at the uh, uh, ballistic accuracy of things like Sabo rounds or things like the 6.8 um, versus the uh, 308 uh, or the 338 Lapua Mag versus the 338 Lapua Regular and you'll see that the higher FPS means more theoretical accuracy if everything else is equal. Um, so that is something to keep in mind as well. The third point is reaction time, right? This is going to matter a little bit more outdoors or at least at longer range facilities where uh, if I take my rifle over here, it is unloaded. Um, and even if it wasn't, I'm firing into a foam pad over here. So everyone knows that the airsoft guns make noise, right? Now, obviously HPA are going to, uh, are going to make <laughs> more, uh, less noise. Dogs being distracting. HPA is going to make less noise, but um, they're still making a noise. So something to remember is that the noise coming out of this rifle or whatever you happen to be using is going to travel faster than the BB. Okay? So the sound waves that are coming off of that rifle are traveling faster than the BB is. Uh, at least hopefully, because otherwise you're pretty much shooting people with a real gun at that point, in like a 22. But, um, so if you are at distance and you have a low FPS gun and they can hear that gun going off, they're going to have more time to move out of the way to dodge, things like that. Um, if you take the average human reaction time being about a quarter of a second, then if your flight time is drastically over a quarter of a second, then however long it takes for the sound to get to the target and then tack on a quarter of a second after that, if your BB time is longer than that, theoretically they can then turn, see it, move out of the way, or if they're already facing you, they're just hearing it first, they can then move out of the way. So having higher FPS does play into that reaction time concept, right? So, um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, with all these things, do you need a heavier FPS gun? So do you need to hop heavier BBs? Do you need to counter as much wind? Do you need to beat reaction time? Because honestly, at close range, the time it takes for the sound to hit and the BB to hit are going to be pretty. Are going to be similar enough to get past most people's reaction times, right? So do you need heavy or higher FPS gun? No, especially if you're playing CQB, you can go lower FPS. It doesn't really matter. Um, I've seen people over the years with those uh, hopper fed, you know, Walmart guns. I don't know if they actually sell them at Walmart anymore, but you know, the old little shrunk down SMGs. I've seen those, I've seen uh, low FPS pistols talking like 250 range. I've seen all sorts of guns that didn't necessarily need a higher FPS. Whereas I've seen plenty of times that the higher FPS where you're getting to that like 400 mark or even snipers DMRs, I've seen plenty of times where they didn't really hit their target, even though they had the heavier FPS or the higher FPS. So that is something to keep in mind. You don't actually need it. A lot of the times what's going to dictate the course of the fight isn't your gun, it isn't the FPS, it isn't the hop up, it isn't all that stuff. It's more often than not your play style, right? close that distance with your feet, then you don't have to worry so much about the gun, especially if it's super windy, you're playing outdoors, something like that. You're probably gonna have to close that distance with your, your feet rather than your rifle anyway. Um, nine times out of 10, 
it's not about the gun, it's about the player themselves. Obviously, if I'm sitting there with a tuned out, you know, thousand dollar DMR, fully upgraded, shooting fours, and I'm going up against a bunch of people with rentals shooting twos, you know, I'm gonna have an advantage at range. But if they are then able to close the distance or something like that, that goes away. So another thing to hit on is that um, my closest field is Las Vegas. Their FPS limit seems to be about 400, so that's fine. Then I go to Phoenix, they have some fields running an FPS limit of 350. So if I do go up that limit of 400, I can't play at Phoenix. I've seen other fields, their rules at least, that say 300 for the CQB areas. So then I can't use it there. So that's something to remember. Another downside to higher FPS is going to be your gearbox is going to break a lot quicker. Uh, your gearbox is going to break quicker. Your gears are going to have more stress. Your piston is going to have more stress. It's just a higher stress environment, so it's not going to last as long. So, and that's something to remember, right? Is the more stress you put your gun under, the quicker it's going to break. So it might not always be the best thing to upgrade your your gun, just get better at playing, right? Uh, get more experience at playing, know your equipment better, things like that. So that's about all I wanted to say this time. So until next time, uh, stay safe and stay hydrated.